In this Mitsubishi 3000 GT video episode, we'll be rebuilding the rusty brake calipers and installing new rotors, brake pads, brake lines, suspension struts, and stabilizer bar link. Looks pretty bad, doesn't it? We started by detaching the brake line flare nut from the brake hose. Applying and soaking penetrating oil on the flare nut will help loosen them up and use crow foot extensions to loosen them up as well. We removed the lower caliper bolt and slid the caliper away from the caliper bracket. At this point, the caliper bracket can now be removed. As you can see, there was a lot of corrosion buildup on the bracket and the brake pads. The caliper was then screwed off the attached brake line. Again, lots of corrosion. But the lower and upper brake lines were then removed. The rusty rotor was pulled off the wheel hub exposing the parking brake drums and rusty brake backing plate. While we were there, we checked the wheel bearing for any telltale signs of wear. Fortunately, they were okay. Now the suspension components. We are removing the stabilizer bar link and replaced it with a new one. We began the strut replacement by removing the lower strut bolt from the control arm. To detach the upper portion of the strut from the chassis, we went into the trunk to remove the plastic access cover that provides a path to the upper strut mount nuts. We'll be replacing the electronic control struts with standard non-electronic KYBs. We detach the electronic strut control wire. Once unplugged, the upper struts can be loosened. The strut can now be angled out by applying downward pressure on the lower control arm. Okay, I set up these alignment marks so I know that this spring has to line up with the center line here of the new strut. And we got this washer over here with an arrow. It's actually pointing towards the front of the car, so we put a little paint mark right here. So now we're just going to take this nut off. I'm not using spring compressors because there's really not that much tension on the spring. After wire brushing off the rust buildup on the brake dust shield, we sprayed a coat of rust prevention black primer paint onto the exposed surfaces to reduce future corrosion. We reinstalled the new strut by positioning the foot of the strut through the upper control arm strut hole. Then the strut's upper portion lifted into the chassis. Once the strut mount studs were in the chassis holes, the strut mount nut was screwed on hand tight to allow a little wiggle room to bolt on the lower portion of the strut. With the new strut bolted firmly in place, the nuts of the upper strut mount were tightened and the access cover reinstalled. At this point, if you turn your ignition on, you'll notice a blinking suspension error light. Since we're replacing the electronic strut with a standard strut, I'll show you later how to disable this indicator. We use brake cleaner solvent to remove brake dust from the parking brake shoes. Brake caliper grease was applied to the brake drum shoes contact points with the backing plate. This will allow the shoes to float on the backing pulley and prevent them from seizing up in the future. So when you're replacing hoses, the last item to tighten is this flare nut here because we want to make sure that the hoses don't get twisted in the process of tightening. Push this through the hole and then make sure the brake line is recessed into the new hose. Just make it end tight so you can adjust it. But the main thing you want to tighten is this end hose to the caliper.
There was considerable corrosion on the brake caliper bracket and we used a hammer to knock out the old brake pads. The caliper pin and pin dust boots were removed as part of the caliper rebuild. After removing the caliper's bleed valve, compressed air was used to push out the caliper piston. Using the edge of a rotary wire brush, we cleaned up the caliper piston. We then wire brushed the caliper bracket and caliper. The complete rebuild of a caliper in detail is shown in the link video, but here we're just showing the highlights. From the link video, we'll be demonstrating how we rebuilt dual piston calipers. I pulled out the rubber drum brake adjustment port plug to be later transferred into the new brake rotor. To prevent the new rotor from getting rust stuck to the wheel hub, I applied anti-seize to the hub to rotor contact surfaces. The rebuilt brake caliper was attached to the new lower brake line by screwing it on hand tight. I set the rotor off to the side to reinstall the brake caliper bracket with new abutment clips and brake pads. Before installing the pads, the back side of the new pads were coated with synthetic brake grease before attaching the brake shims. The grease prevents the brake from squealing caused by brake vibration. With the pads installed, the upper caliper pin was lubricated and the caliper slid onto the pin. With the caliper lowered onto the pads, the lower caliper pin was bolted on completing the brake job. With all the caliper components installed, all of the upper and lower brake line connection points were tightened and held firmly in place with the brake retention clips. The last and final step is the installation of the new stabilizer bar link. So after we rebuilt and serviced all the four brake calipers, we did a brake service by flushing out the fluid. We have a video link using an AC vacuum pump as a quick and easy way of evacuating all the air in the line and putting in new fluid. And before you go, in order to extinguish the suspension dash light, here is what you need to do. Now to turn that off, we go to the rear of the car. We remove these screws over here. So that's the ECS control module. And that's all you have to do. And we're done.